So we're looking at um, momentum, uh, practice, free response questions, the first set, and I'm looking at number four. It's an interesting problem. Um, one of the things that as we get into momentum, if you haven't watched any of the other ones, is they can start to include, and they do in this one, multiple topics. Um, so I, quickly, we have a pendulum. It's going to swing down, hit a ball. The ball is going to transfer some of its pendulum to the gray ball. It's going to then, because it has velocity now, fly off horizontally and land here. So we have kinematics going on here. And they want to know what what the speed of this ball and that one are after the collision and what directions and so forth and whether or not kinetic and whether or not um, this is an elastic collision. So a lot of stuff going on. I've spread it out here piece by piece. So hopefully you have a copy of the problem in front of you um, or on a computer screen in front of you. So part A, you might want to, I'm going to run through this real quick and then maybe based on this, you could start trying it on your own or, or, or retry what you've gotten. A is a conservation of mechanical energy. The mechanical energy at the, at the start here has to equal the mechanical energy when it gets down to this level. Don't worry about the collision. What's tricky about B is B references calculate the speed of the 0 0.2 two kilogram, two kilogram ball immediately after the collision. What's tricky is, is it, you don't really have, the best way to do that is to figure out the speed it must have launched with using kinematics. Then you can take that speed and do some conservation of momentum to find out how fast the ball, um, the heavier ball was going after the collision. We'll know how fast the ball was going before the collision based on the kinetic energy it has here. But afterwards, I don't know. After the collision, I can find what the speed of the smaller ball was by using kinematics, and I should be able to handle that. Concept and then we have to go figure out how high the ball swings again after its collision. So that's just the opposite of this. We were given the kinetic energy, we got to figure out the potential. And then the definition of um, here, the definition of elastic collisions. They say they ask us, is this elastic? This is like the third question in a row. I think we've seen this. If it is perfectly elastic, which theoretically is an impossible possibility, but if it is perfectly elastic, then the kinetic energy is conserved. The kinetic energy initial has to equal the kinetic energy final. Or you would say, and this is maybe a better way to look at it, the change in kinetic energy would be zero. So we have to test that. So we have to look at the kinetic energies of the two balls after the collision and before and see if they're the same or different. So that's the outline of the problem. Um, I'll get started on it now. And But if you want to pause it and come back and see, you know, section by section even or something like that and see how it's going. Um, once again, I haven't really looked at the answers here at all. So I'm liable to make mistakes as well. I did in the last problem. It's still bothering me. Um, all right. So here we go. So our ball is going to go from a stationary position up in the air, assuming like this is zero, right? Um, and it has potential energy here. So it's got mechanical energy initial in the form of gravitational potential. When it gets to the bottom here, all of that gravitational potential energy is still going to be the same mechanical energy. So the mechanical energy initial is going to be the same as the final. There's no friction. Let me zoom in on this a little more, maybe. There we go. It's all going to be in the form of the kinetic energy here at the bottom. All right, so we need MGH. Hmm. Okay, so there's a little bit of trigonometry stuck in here because H is this distance here. Ah. But if I can find this distance here, 
and subtract it from the total distance, which I know is the total length of the thing, then I can probably find out what I need. So what we're going to do is off to the side, just going to sketch that triangle that we see there. So I don't know, this looks like it's about one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, that up three. All right, so we have this triangle, and we have a 60 degree angle here. And what I really want to know is this side. I'll just call it Y. I know this is 0.6, so I should have enough to do it. Because I got the hypotenuse and the adjacent. So the cosine of 60 degrees is going to equal the adjacent, Y, over the hypotenuse, 0 0.6. Which means that distance y is going to be 0.6 times the cosine of 60 degrees, which I believe is a half. I'm just going to make sure. In fact, I'm sure it is, but that's all right. 0.6 times cosine 60. Yep, half point six. So that's 0.3. So y equals 0.3. So this distance here is 0.3. Well, this distance here to here is the length of the pendulum because it's going to swing down. So that's 0.6. So the height above is in fact also 0.3. So our initial potential energy, our gravitational potential energy at the start, is going to be mgh. It's going to be 0.66 kilograms times, I'm going to use 10 for simplicity times h, which is 0.3. By the way, you don't need the mass because it's going to be the same mass here and they're going to cancel. The mass has probably come from conservation of um, momentum later on. We're going to need that, but we'll just go ahead and calculate it out. So initially, the gravitational potential energy is, uh, let's see, 6.6 .6 times 0.6.6 .6 times, so 1.98 joules at the start. So at the bottom, it still has 1.98 joules of mechanical energy. But now, when it swings down to here, it has no more potential. It's all got it in kinetic. So let's put it over here. Mm, yeah. So our kinetic energy at the bottom would be one half the mass, which is still 0.66, times the unknown velocity here at the bottom. Squared. I'll even put bottom. There we go. But that kinetic energy is the same as the initial mechanical energy at the top, so it's 1.98 equals, right, I'll change half of 0.66, that's 0.33, times the velocity at the bottom squared. So quick set of calculations, divide by 0.33, so 1.98 divided by 0.33. Take the square root of that, by the way, that just is 6, equals V bottom squared. Take the square root of that, 2.45. So the velocity at the bottom is 2.45 meters per second. Now, we'll look at points later on, but you're going to want to show you why this is the least, probably the least important thing here in terms of the points that you're going to get. They might give you a point for units on that, so you want to make sure they're there. But the answer is, is maybe worth a point, but even that, but what you did, establish, establishing somehow that, and probably what I really should do is write in here that the mechanical energy at original equals the mechanical energy final just something to point out that i'm recognizing this conservation of energy they should see it really if they pay attention they'll see it here when they realize i took the original potential energy and set it equal to the current the kinetic energy at the bottom but you might want to spell it out for them. all right so i think i got that one done now here in order to find the velocity of the 0.22 kilogram ball after the collision, so really the best way to do it is to 
find that velocity based on how it behaves after the collision in terms of kinematics. So we set up our variables. So I got, it's a y-dimensional thing. Actually, it's a two-dimensional thing. So it's a y and an x. Um, we'll set up the x-dimension, which is just your beginning x-position, your final, oh, sorry. No, 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 no. There we go. So in the x-dimension, we have our beginning x-position, our final. So our beginning would be here, and our final would be 1.4. Call that zero. Um, we don't have an acceleration because gravity doesn't accelerate things horizontally. Um, we have a velocity, which is what we're looking for. We'll call it an x velocity. And we have a time it would take to get from here to here. But that time is determined in the y dimension. In the y dimension, I have a starting height, I have a starting y velocity, I have an acceleration. I have final position, final velocity, and time. Now, my starting height, I'm going to go with 1.2 meters, which means my final height, 0 meters. My initial y velocity, 0. Why? Because the initial launch is horizontal. This is one of the key facts of kinematics. When something's launched horizontally, the beginning y component of the velocity is zero. Acceleration, all right, that's negative 9.8. I'm not, I don't think I care how fast it's going. I really need this time so I can bring it over here. So I'm going to not worry about anything with v. So that leaves me with the second equation, which says that the final position is equal to one half, and you're probably getting a point for writing the equation, g t squared plus V-O-Y-T plus Y original. That's almost guarantee you that that is a probably a point. This is probably a point. Plugging them in is probably a point. We'll look when we get there. So I know that the original Y velocity is zero. Boom. And we're going to say the final is zero. So I'm really writing zero here equals one-half g t squared, so negative 4.9 times t squared plus 1.2. Subtract the 1.2 from both sides. And we're going to divide by negative 4.9 and take the square root. So I got 1.2 divided by 4.9 it's going to come out positive, and then I take the square root, and it comes out to be 0.495. So the time it takes is 0.495 seconds to fall that distance. That's also then the time it takes to go this way. So that's why we do it that over there in the Y, 0.495 seconds. Now I got everything I need, because one of the things we're, we got to remember from kinematics Projectiles like this, you don't need any fancy equations in the X. There's only one equation. Um, rate times time equals distance. The speed times the time equals the distance traveled. And let's see. I am looking for the speed. So that's going to be the distance divided by the time. And that would be the distance of 1.4 meters divided by the time of 0 0.495. I get 2.83. So the original velocity the velocity of this thing after the collision is 2.83 meters per second. So keep that in mind. Now we go to conservation of momentum. Because they're asking us for the velocity of the pendulum ball after the collision. So I know, think about it, there's three velocities we could know. The pendulum ball before the collision, the pendulum ball after the collision, and the gray ball, the smaller ball, after the collision. Those are the three. Right now, I have two of them. I have this one, 
the, black, the pendulum ball before, and I have the gray ball after. But what I don't have is the pendulum after the collision. So we're going to set, that's where conservation of momentum is going to help us. So I, I always write conservation of momentum spread out like this so that I have plenty of room to work. But in the beginning, there was only one object moving, and that was the ball just, just as it was getting down and getting ready to hit the other ball, that pendulum ball. So it's going to be its momentum, which is wonderfully simple. It is going to be point, its mass was 0.66 kilograms, and we determined based on this, the energy portion of it, that it was 2.45 meters per second. Let's, let's, let's take a break for a second and point something out. Let's say you either had no idea what was going on over here or got this wrong. It doesn't matter. If you have no idea, pick a number. 3, 17, it doesn't matter. Pick a number. 17 probably not really realistic, but 2, you know, pick a number. Don't make it negative. And just use it here. Because the, their point here is, is as long as you use this velocity there you're getting that point for setting this up right. It doesn't matter that that number is right or wrong. They, they recognize that if you had gotten this velocity, you knew what to do with it. So don't think that if you know how to do conservation of momentum, but you forgot conservation of mechanical energy, be like, ah, they want the velocity. Okay, well, that would, I, this, uh, I could use, I guess I'll make up a number. Make up a number. Make it one. Make it easy on yourself. And your answers then, your answers can be all jacked up from there. But they have to figure, they have to follow that to make it clear and give you credit for doing it right with the wrong numbers because they're interested in what you're doing, not the numbers. That's why I don't like WebAssign because WebAssign just cares about the numbers. You could have made a little mistake here and get the wrong answer, but really done it right. And then you're wasting time just trying to figure out where that little mistake was. So, but I digress. So here's the momentum before. It's all in the, the, possession of the pendulum ball because the little one was just at rest but then they hit and now you have two momentums you have the momentum of the pendulum plus the momentum of the little ball that went flying so now you have this momentum of this guy flying off and the momentum of this thing after the collision does it bounce back does it continue on we'll figure out the numbers will positive and negatives will take care of it all right, so the momentum afterwards for the pendulum ball, that's going to be 0.66 kilograms times its unknown velocity at the bottom. For the gray ball, it's going to be 0.22 kilograms times the 2.83 that we found. Once again, if you weren't sure, make up a number. I don't know what direction this ball, whether the, the pendulum ball would have hit and bounced back or hit and continued, but we'll find that out. The negatives will take care of that, so we don't worry about it. I do know some numbers here. So I got 0.66 times 2.45. So that's 1.617 kilogram meters per second equals 0.66. And then over here, I got 0.22 times 2.83. So it had 0.6226 kilogram meters per second of the, of the original momentum. So I'm going to subtract this from both sides. I get a positive number. I get... 0.9944 kilogram meters per second is equal to 0.66 kilograms times this velocity of the pendulum ball after. Um, so I divide by the 0.66. I get 1.51. So the velocity of the pendulum ball after the collision is a positive 1.51, we'll say, meters per second. All right, so there's a couple answers in there. So calculate the speed of that ball after the collision. Okay, I got that, 1.51.
indicate the direction of the motion, well, it's going to be going to the right because that's positive the way we've set it up. Everything going this way was positive. Now, D, they want to find, so they have this, this ball that is moving with a velocity of 1.51 meters per second after the collision, and it's still attached to a pendulum, so it has kinetic energy here at the bottom, which would be its initial mechanical energy in this case, and it's just the reverse of what we did up here. Here we started up high and figured out what was going on down low using conservation of mechanical energy. Same thing. Here it's low, where it's kinetic energy that we can calculate. We want to know how high off of the table is it going to go to. All right, so let's get it. What we know is the mechanical energy initially, and I can even write at the bottom, has to equal the mechanical energy final at the top. At the bottom, it's all kinetic energy. One half, 0.66 times 1.51 squared. At the top, it's going to be mgh. So it's going to be 0.66 times 10. Sometimes I use 9.8, sometimes I use 10. I don't think it makes a difference. Times this height that I'm looking for. Well, the truth is, the 0.66s don't really matter. You can cancel them out in this case, but we'll just keep them and run with it. Um, why well, get all fancy? So I got 0 0.5 times 0 0.66 times 1.51 squared is an amount of energy of 0.7524 joules. Equals point, well, equals 6.6 H. 10 times 6.6. So if I divide by 6.6, It, the height it goes back up to is 0.114 meters. This makes some sense, right? Because if it started back here at 0.3 meters, it hits, it's going to give up some of its energy to the other ball, so it, it's not going to be able to go back up as high. It's not going to be going as fast as it was before. So, yeah, that makes sense. Now, here's what we need to know. In this last part, they want to know, is, the, is it a perfectly elastic collision? In other words, is the change in kinetic energy from before, so before the collision, how much energy, kinetic energy the ball had just before the pendulum one did, just before the collision, does it equal the two kinetic energies of the balls afterwards? So let's see. Somewhere in here, I have the kinetic energy of that ball. I think it's right here. No, 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 no. I already calculated it. It's right here. This it's really equal to the potential energy at the top. So I know that the kinetic energy of the ball, when it gets to this point, I'll get here, hold on. So the initial kinetic energy of the system is whatever the kinetic energy of this ball is when it gets here. Well, that's equal to the potential energy it has here. So I already know that number. That's 1.98. So I know that the kinetic energy initial, so let's see, change in would be kinetic energy final, minus kinetic energy initial. And I already know the initial is um, 1.98. Now, after the collision, there are two objects. One of them, this guy, we've got a little one that got, we got the projectile motion one. It had a kinetic, it will have a kinetic energy of one half 0.22 kilograms, this is mass, times that velocity we found, 2.83 meters per second squared. Ooh, not leaving myself a lot of space. Plus the kinetic energy of the pendulum ball afterwards, which is what we found over here, right about here. So that's 0.7524 joules. So let's see what we get. Are those are is basically what we're saying is this energy after the same as the energy before? So we're going to find out. So 0 0.5 times 0 0.22 times 
2.83 squared equals plus 0.7524. So I get 1.63 joules after minus 1.98 joules before. So we lose 0.347 joules of kinetic energy. I'm trying to bring that out here a little bit. So we lose. This is the energy afterwards. This is the energy before. We lose that much. And if we if it's if we lost energy, then it is not a perfectly elastic collision. So you would basically say, because the kinetic change in kinetic energy was something other than zero, then it is not a perfectly elastic collision. Because the only in perfectly elastic collisions, the kinetic energy before and after are the same, which means the change would be zero. All right, I think that's it.